Hi, it's Dwyer. It's July the 26th, 2019. Let's talk Dylan White. Right? What I want people to do and what I want boxing to do is to think carefully about its handling of this situation. Because in my opinion, already mistakes have been made. Now let's be clear. You have an A sample and you have a B sample on a drug test. Right? You're not legally guilty until you fail the B sample. In other words, we're going to presume that you're innocent. We're going to presume that the first result is not reliable until we receive confirmation on the second result. So the way boxing has done it now is that a guy like Dylan White, give me one second, A guy like Dylan White was able to fail the A sample according to reports, right? There were metabolites for a very powerful steroid, Dianabol, right? Very powerful steroid, apparently in Dylan White's sample, right? So they allowed him to fight. He's presumed innocent until they test the B sample. Boxing's got to get it right. That's got to change because here's what happened. According to BoxRack.com, they didn't tell his unbeaten opponent, Oscar Rivas. Right, folks, Oscar Rivas might be a father. Might be somebody's husband. Might be somebody's son. Might be somebody's brother. Don't you think the one person on the planet who deserved to know that Dylan White had failed his A sample should have been his opponent. Right? Oscar Rivas, like every boxer, is risking their lives entering the ring. You're risking your life even that much more if your opponent is taking performance-enhancing drugs. And I'm just telling you again, Diana Ball is a major steroid, right? Major. So just the risk involved in stepping in the ring with a hopped-up, juiced-up, possibly, opponent should have required boxing authorities to tell Oscar Rivas player, look, your opponent might be juiced up on Diana Ball here, right? He failed his A sample. Now, if Box Rec is right and Rivas wasn't told, then I don't have the red cup or red flag that's big enough to throw at boxing. That would be a tragedy. That would be a travesty. Right? Everyone around you knows that your opponent failed a pre-fight drug test and might be juiced up and no one's telling you? You mean you don't have the opportunity at that point to say, look, player, I got bills to pay. This sport is dangerous enough without my opponent possibly juicing on Diana Ball. So boxing, I'm just urging them here. I'm using this public platform needs to get this right at a minimum going forward. People who are fighting someone who has failed the A sample of their drug test need to be advised, right? Quite frankly, they need to have the option of saying, look, I'm not fighting some guy who may have taken performance enhancing drugs. I'm not fighting a guy who's failed his A sample. Right? The testing regimen needs to be changed so at least we could get some kind of preliminary reading on the B sample so that the opponent, the Oscar Rivas's going forward, have proper information about whether or not their opponent has passed the pre-fight drug test. We shouldn't be here guessing about it after the fight. Let me also say this, you know, 
if that B sample comes back positive, then boxing needs to do the right thing. Oscar Rivas was unbeaten entering the ring. Right? Unbeaten. By the way, in the fight, has anyone noticed that he knocked down Dylan White? In other words, if Dylan White was hopped up on PEDs, not even that unfair advantage was enough to keep him on his feet for 12 rounds. Well, the point I'm making here is, please, boxing needs to just have this be understood. If the guy you're fighting fails both the A and B side of his drug test, your alleged loss to him should be wiped off. You shouldn't lose an unbeaten record because your opponent was on PEDs. Right? That simply shouldn't happen. Now, I've been here online and Dylan White is going around saying, hey, they allowed me to fight. And so I won that fight fair and square. Let's stop kidding ourselves. Red flag on this very weak PR campaign by Dylan White while we're waiting for his B sample. Right? Understand, just like People in the real world, right? Killers, who you have a bunch of evidence on, aren't legally guilty until they're found to be guilty at trial or they enter a guilty plea, right? You can have DNA evidence on the guy. You can have, you know, film on the guy. You can have eyewitness testimony. Eyewitness says, hey, I saw him kill that man, right? Well, let's face it, in the real world, Right? The accused is innocent until proven guilty. So it's ridiculous for an accused, as we're waiting the B sample, as we're waiting the proof, it's ridiculous for that accused to say, hey, I'm innocent and I won this fight fair and square before his B samples even tested after he failed his A sample. So Dylan White's comments to the media about winning the fight fair and square shouldn't be given any credibility. None whatsoever. If that B sample comes back positive, quite frankly, the fight needs to be expunged. It needs to be wiped off the books. Otherwise, it's just going to be too messy. You're going to say, you know, Oscar Rivas is unbeaten against people who haven't failed drug tests. Right, let's make the promoter's job easier than that. Let's just say Oscar Rivas is unbeaten. Right, that's if Dylan White's B sample comes back positive. Right, the argument should simply be, this fight didn't happen. Right? Dylan White, who criticized other fighters right, for having therapeutic exemptions and pretty much told the press that he thought a champion was juicing, right? a then heavyweight champion was juicing. Right? If Dylan White is found to have juiced, the British Boxing Commission can do with him whatever they want. Because this guy would have been the ultimate hypocrite, right? A guy going around in public accusing others of juicing while juicing himself. Right? Let's just, let's just be as blunt as possible. Right? So to sum up, really Oscar Rivas is the story here. I've made sure the thumbnail of this video is Oscar Rivas. Because he's the guy who was put at risk, possibly, by his opponent's juicing. Right? He's the guy who showed up in the ring. Right? He passed his drug test. He's the guy who showed up at a disadvantage because his opponent hadn't passed his drug test. He should have been told that beforehand. Worse yet, he should have been given the option 
of backing out of the fight. Let me say, maybe we need a new form of insurance. So if there's a cancellation because a guy has been juicing, and let's face it, we have an epidemic right now at heavyweight, don't we? Right? Less than a year ago, Anthony Joshua was supposed to fight Gerald Miller, who failed multiple drug tests, according to reports. Now, you mean to tell me within a year, a mandatory contender has already failed an A sample? Let me just say this, too. Look into Dylan White's background. He failed a drug test before, according to reports. So, in this failed drug test environment, and let me just say also, I don't want to hear about tainted meat. I know that excuse was used in another weight class to gloss over a failed drug test. I don't want to hear about tainted meat and stuff like that. Right? If Dylan White fails the B sample, Oscar Rivas should still be an unbeaten fighter. This fight shouldn't count. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Right? If Dylan White fails that B sample, wow, his career could be over. Right? Could be over. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.